Welcome back to another Twinkle Tips Friday video, guys. This is Clyde here from Pixel Pro Displays. Merry Christmas to you all. We've got an extra special tip today, actually a couple tips. I'm gonna walk you through some things. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. We are back guys for another Twinkle Tips Friday video and I have a couple little things that I'm doing out here in my display. It is Friday, it's December 22nd, 21st, something like that. Uh, and I'm just walking around looking at my show. See, I've got some stuff on the house going, I've got uh, you know, the reindeer going doing a little bars test you know this is this is what you do i put i put a bars test on the entire house here and i found a couple things oh look at this i found that <laughs> my star on the front door isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing i completely hung that wrong there we go there i got it right this time i hadn't realized i put that up on the wrong with a wrong point pointing up uh, which brings me to a good recommendation it's good to mark the top of your props which ones uh, where the tops go so that's just one thing that star right there that star right there that's one thing that I come out and I wanted to look at and fix can't believe I didn't notice it before but hey all the programming seemed to look good on it whenever I was watching the sequence so uh, I kind of let it go right so one of the things I want to share with you is that there are different things that uh, helped me this season, especially whenever I had a number of uh, issues whenever it came to wind. So the first thing here would be these right here. This is a um, th this is the pigtail that goes to it. But I've got a I've got a um, uh, bungee cord here, and these aren't just your regular everyday bungee cords. These are DIY cuttable bungee cords. So let's go have a look at those. So these are the, um, the, this is the bungee cord material. I, I want to say it's uh, 3 sixteenths maybe. I don't know. Um, and then I ordered uh, this uh, pack of 40. They're kayak bungees. And uh, you got a little sleeve here. You slide the sleeve right onto the cord. And then you insert. Now look at these little things right here. You uh, it, you have these little grabbers there. You slide that right onto the thing. Now, it's hard to do with one hand. There, I slid it on. And then all you do is you just slide this collar right up there, and it clicks right in place. And there you've got this little bungee cord, and you can cut it to any size that you need. So those are a wonderful addition, especially when you've got, like, a prop here. I can wrap the bungee cord around here. I could tie a knot and I drill a hole through here, tie a knot and put the bungee cord right through here, tie a knot off and then stretch it down. Like I've got it hooked here to the bottom of my chroma trim, which is secured really, really tightly in place with all the zip ties that are part of the PVC that, that hold it up. So that has been a helpful godsend in the horrific winds that we were experiencing a number of days, like well, two weeks ago, a week ago. And uh, that's number one. I love those things. You should, I'll, I'll put a link to the, the ones we use down in the description if you want to get to them. Uh, but they are fantastic. Absolutely love them. So the next thing I want to show you are these awesome little um, uh, binder clips. These binder clips have come in unbelievably helpful uh, whenever it comes to hanging up these lights, whenever you look down underneath, uh, we go over here, we look down underneath, we have this uh, cable that's showing here. So if I see if I can get this in the shot, I can bungee this up and, and kind of clip it right into the back of the other pixels. And I'll show you another picture on the other side. You see the other one hanging behind me there. That's bungeed up, or not bungeed up, but that's clipped up using using a binder clip. So it kind of helps to hide some of those unsightly cord. And there you can see, I used one right there. There's one. I kind of grouped these together here. I didn't have another solution other than I could have used a zip tie. But you can you can see that I've got them clipped here, holding up the connectors here. I've got them clipped here. There's a couple there. I could take some time uh, and, and add some more. 
But so, yeah, there's a couple other things uh, that you can do whenever you are in the middle of the season. And this is one of the things that I like to do is I do go through this play. I don't want to say every day, but when I see a problem, I want to go get it fixed, especially during the show. And it, it was raining the other night. The ground is real soft where, where I was at and working. And uh, I decided to hold off and do my repair today uh, in the daytime whenever I could see better. And I could kind of record it so you guys can see it as well. So right over here, I gotta watch where I'm walking. So right over here, we've got a bad pixel. And last night, I found out that since this is a bad pixel, what I wanna do is I wanna fix it. So I popped out the one, the last one that was working, and it's back here. Well. This is the last one that's working, and this is the one that stopped working. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this guy here. And you can tell, you can tell that that's the last one working because, let me point to it, that's the last one working. Everything else is working with the bars, but this is not. So I'm going to cut out this pixel and the one after it. Now, it's really important, it's really important that you unplug your uh, connector from power before you do this connection repair because you're going to cut into the wires and if you cut into the wires guess what's going to fry you're probably going to fry one of these five amp fuses and you don't want to do that especially if you don't have any spares so now i'm going to go in and i'm going to uh, unscrew this i can't do this one-handed so i'm going to have to put the camera down but i'm going to disconnect power here and then we're going to clip out this pixel and the one down below it, which is the last working one. And then we'll go ahead and we'll splice in some new pixels. Now, to be completely honest, I have used a number of different connectors and I've had very good luck personally with them. But I'll also say that I usually don't have pixel problems. So whenever I have to splice a pixel, it's really, really easy for me, okay? And it's not usually a big deal, and I don't solder my pixels together anymore. I haven't soldered since probably 2019. And the reason that I don't is because these UI2 connectors the and, and, and uh, clickets and other things of such have been very beneficial. I've used them with great fortune and never had any issues with them. While I know other people may have had issues with them, that's not been my experience. Now... Um, I made this repair probably two years ago, and you can see that I used UI2 official connectors. But in today's uh, connector repair, I'm going to use some of these that I got from Matos that JR sent me. And I, I want to say JR sent me these uh, three years ago. So I'm just now getting around to using them, again, because I don't have a lot of bad pixels where I have to repair them. All right, since I can't hold the camera and do this pixel repair while you guys watch, I wish I could, uh, I'm going to do it with pictures. I'm going to take a, a picture between each one, and I'm going to show you how I do it one at a time. So here we are. I've got these, these awesome little, uh, uh, little cutters here. So we'll go ahead and cut. We'll go ahead and cut the pixel right there up close to the end. There we go, got that, that one cut off. Now we'll cut this one off real close to the end of the pixel. That tells me that I have severed these pixels right here, bam. That way I know that these are bad pixels and I can throw them away. So then what we'll do is we'll get right to uh, my second solution, which I recommend this. People say cut off the pixels off the end of your strings. And uh, I disagree with that. See, at the end of the string, I leave extra pixels sitting out here that were once attached, but I left them connected here, and I left them sit here because guess what? If I have a pixel repair, I don't have to go in the house and find them. I know I have them sitting right here in the background, and I usually hang them off right at the back end of here. So let's go ahead and cut this one right in half. These are of the same vintage because they are right from the original string. So you can see, you can see these have a line on this one here, a, a dashed line. We'll go ahead and match that up with the dashed line that is right here off of the output side of this pixel. Now you can see this is the data inside of the pixel. You can see where it says right in the center there, 12 volt DIGND. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to match up, see I've already got my uh, connector here, on the dashed line on the output side to match up with the dashed line on the input side. So I'm gonna connect these really quick. So right now it's just a matter of uh, getting those uh, slid into the back there. Now I'm, I have a pair of channel locks here and I use these channel locks with one notch down and I'm gonna take them and I'm going to slide them right on to my connector and I'm gonna squeeze. Oh, you didn't see it. Maybe I'll do it again. Squeeze. And that should squeeze some jelly out of there, some dielectric grease and that should be a good solid connection. So here's something I'm going to do. I'm going to plug in the power cord now because I've made the I made the cuts. I like to see them light up. I like to see them light up whenever they're actually uh, working and done and ready to, for the show. And now you see I got them plugged in. We have our we have our first pixel repair there. And let's go ahead and splice these other two in. Now I want to show you. You want to be really sure that you push these all the way in the right way. And then you take your uh, uh, channel locks here and just give them a squeeze. See how that that's a flat squeeze, not a crimped squeeze. And there we've got the third one connected. And now as we squeeze this one in place, this should light up. There we go. Looks like our red pixels and our white pixels are lit up with our bars pattern. And that means we have a good set of pixel repairs. Now we just need to go in and slap the other side together right here with this side. So now as long as I've got all three of these other wires connected correctly, when I crimp them, they all should come on and work. All right, we're gonna get in here with our channel lock pliers and we're just gonna crimp one. And then we're just gonna crimp number two. And we're just going to crimp number three. And squeeze good and tight. There we go. And there you can see, look, the lights are lighting up. You can see, look at that. They're, are they doing the bars pattern? Looks like they are. Let's go stand back and look. And there you can see the whole pixel wall here is just uh, bars crazy and fixed and running the way it should be. And can you even tell exactly where it is that I made the repairs? Right there, two connections. And that's the old one from two years ago or last year maybe. Where do I get my pixel repairs from? I get them from the end of my strings. I actually leave my pixels connected. And if I need a repair, guess where I take them from? I take them from these last ones that are sitting on the prop. Well, that is everything I have for you today, guys. Thank you for joining us for another Twinkle Tips Friday video. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like and don't forget to hit the big black, black subscribe button down below and hit the bell for notifications so that you know anytime that we put out a video, hopefully it's a content that you are going to appreciate, enjoy, use, and help you to become less frustrated with doing things in this wonderful hobby that we have that we all share together. So guys, uh, if you appreciate the things we do, consider joining the PPD Sequence Club where you get one awesome sequence each and every month. And we also give you awesome discounts on things that you're already going to buy like pixels, make a tree kits from Matos Designs and props galore from many of the different vendors. We, we have a 10% uh, discount standing from Boscoyo Studios, so you can get something like the PPD wreath up there for 10% off. Uh, and we have a number of other vendors that give us a huge list of discounts just for you as a PPD Sequence Club member. So guys, thank you for joining me. We will see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now. But you know what I do need? I need help. You guys, I need some kind of 3D printed thing to go across here to clip into this side of the uh, gutter so that I can manage to clip these up here. So I need a 3D clip for that. So if any of you can help me with that clip, that'd be great.